Okay, we're back and our pieces have been given somewhat of an opportunity to dry. So you can see here much more uh, sturdy, has much more integrity. I'm not going to squish so much, but it's still flexible enough for me to paddle, mold, and cut. So we are going to work on the neck and the jawline today. So I'm going to put my shoulders forward here so you can see what I am doing. I have taken my fettling knife and I've just sketched in sort of this area where I'm going to work on the collar and the neck. And it may be a little wider than you might think a neck would be. That's because a lot of people just think of this neck as this kind of this pipe stem that attaches our shoulders to our head. Uh, it's actually more of a triangle because we've got our trapezius muscles that support the neck from the shoulder. It's kind of a, a triangle shape that's going to go up to the back of our head. And our jaw is going to be supported um, in the front by a narrower shape of clay. But we just don't want to make a neck that's just like this little pipe that sits on here. So I'm sketching in this area here. It's a little wider even than the ends of the shoulders here. Uh, some of this will be taken up by the collar, but really you can think of the shoulders, the neck, the other shoulder as um, kind of three equal parts of the top of the torso here. Okay, so let's give that a little spritz. We're going to put that aside for now. I'm going to do a little cleanup on the jawline of the skull here. So right now his head is kind of shaped like a shopping bag. We don't really want that. Let me adjust the camera just a little bit. There we go. Okay. Okay. So we've got the shape here. It's a little bit like a shopping bag. I want to clean this up. So the profile right here, since this is our face area, it's the top of our head, back of our head. I want to just clean this up a little bit, get that more tapered jaw area. So if this is the chin here. We're going to bring some of that clay underneath and we're going to refine and shorten this a little bit later. But you can take that clay that's sitting at the end of the bottom of your skull there and start to bring that underneath like you're closing up the underside opening there. Okay, So we're going to paddle, probably do a lot of adjustment on that later, but we want to just kind of give ourselves an end point. So when we're looking at this, we can think about our proportions. Okay, you can see that's starting to look like a jawline there. I'm going to take my fettling knife. This is the bottom of my skull here, bottom of my chin there. I'm going to draw a diagonal line that attaches those two points, just like that. Okay, and then I'm going to lightly sketch in a line for the back of the skull here. That way I will have my jaw begin symmetrically on the other side where it should naturally. Then I'm going to go down again and draw that diagonal. Let's bring it down just a little more. You can always err on the side of giving yourself a little excess. If you cut off too much, you end up having to add more clay later. If it's a little too much, it's always easy to take stuff off and shape it. Okay. I'm going to look at that. I'm going to still give myself a little more room there. Like I said, I can always come back and fix that. So I'm going to take my fettling knife and I am going to just cut and get that excess kind of piece of clay off of there. Curve that under the jaw. Okay. There we go. So now we have a headpiece that looks a lot like the skull. If you've been looking at the skull on the 3D digital interactive skull that I linked you with, I'll put it down in the description. If you are coming from another source, there is a great interactive skull 
that you don't have to download at all. It's almost as good as having one in real life. If you are not the sort of person to have skulls around the house, you will find that very useful. Okay, so we're gonna give him a little spritz. Uh, once they start to dry, sometimes that drying can accelerate a little bit depending on how your atmosphere is. It's getting a little warmer here, so I just want to be mindful that my clay isn't getting too leather hard so it doesn't get crumbly. Okay, so we're going to bring our neck forward here. And I am going to build up the neck here. And I'm going to do that probably by slipping on a series of strips. If you taken my class before, my Ceramics One class, we do a project called the Udu, where we do construction with uh, slips, kind of stacking them up the same way you do coils when you're doing a coil project, but you're just using slabs that have been cut into strips. So I have a slab that is already rolled out here. <clears throat> and I'm just gonna cut strips that are about an inch. Don't need to be much taller than that. A lot of sculptors use this method. It's a good way of building up quickly, giving yourself flexibility with the slab technique, not have a lot of large slabs kind of flopping around that you're trying to tuck and shape. And I've kept this a little bit on the thick side. It's just probably a tiny bit wider in thickness than a half an inch and that's in case I need to stretch or pull or tug or pinch or anything. I've got enough slack here that if I started to pinch on that uh, I wouldn't get too thin. Okay so I'm going to put a base coil on there. Bring this forward. Okay so we've got our slip here. Put a load of slip just on the inside ring here. So if you pretend that your subject is wearing a t-shirt, this is kind of where the t-shirt collar would hang. That is where the beginning of your neck coil is going to go. I'm going to use one of the longer ones here. And score that really well, especially for something like this. It's going to be a load-bearing joint. It's going to have. This is going to be um, just like a human being. This is an area that's going to support the weight of the head. So we want to make sure that we have a good base of support there. It's not too skinny. If it's too thin and skinny, then your head can sag or even break off just the way a stuffed animal with this weak stitching around the neck can lose its integrity there. Okay, so let's start in the front there. I'm gonna slightly tilt this inwards a little bit just because, again, we don't want that kind of chimney pipe look. We want something that tapers inward. Okay, our trapezius, again, that form kind of a triangle. Okay, so I've created this kind of angle by slipping that slab in. Okay. In. Okay. As I'm putting that on the neck base. Okay. I'm going to take that and just join that. I can come back and smooth it more later, but I'm just going to get that on there. So it's a good join. And so the neck doesn't look like it's just stuck on there. We want it to look organically like it's coming out of the body. <clears throat> okay. So I can pinch that upwards just a bit. Okay, so we're using a combination of all kinds of techniques here. I don't want to go too thin because once again this is going to be the base that holds a lot of weight but we don't need it this thick. So I'm going to pinch that slightly. I'm angling my pinching movement inwards. 
so we don't flare out. We keep that angle pointing inwards. Okay. <clears throat> there we go. Okay, so we're ready for another slab. Let's see if I, can, I might even be able to get away with the shorter one. Yeah, we're doing really well. Okay, so we're going to slip and score again. Once again, start in the front there, hold that down and pinch as you go. That'll help keep your placement aligned with your lower piece of clay. Okay, and I'm also bringing this in towards the center, so I'm still getting that kind of sloped inward look there. Okay, I'm going to end up with a little excess, which is fine. I'm just going to pinch that excess piece off of there. And I'm going to blend these two together. Okay. We'll smooth that seam down in a minute. We just want to get these two connected so this top piece doesn't slide off the bottom piece. Okay, good. Okay. So we're going to join this up here. A little strength. Okay. And I'm going to smooth that down that seam so he doesn't look like Frankenstein with a zipper neck there. Make that one continuous angle. If you have a subject that has, who's kind of aged and has very ropey looking muscles and tendons, you might want to carve those in and add them later. I'm going to have a collar on my subject here, so I don't really need to go into a lot of detail on those neck muscles. I just need the shape to support the collar. Okay. So keeping that angle there. Here. Okay. Pinch that up just slightly. Okay. So I'm going to take a little newspaper. Before I even do that, I'm going to come in and make a hole right down the center there on the top of the shoulders. Okay. That way we'll have continuous airflow through the piece there. There won't be any air trapped in the neck. the newspaper here. Okay. I'll keep that supported while I'm working on it. <clears throat> so we've put wetter clay on drier clay. So that always means that you kind of up your risk factor of having the wetter clay pop away from the drier clay because that's going to start shrinking at a different rate. 
So we want to make sure that we slow down the drying right now, especially of this bottom piece. I'm going to take my plastic. We'll wrap that around the bottom part while I'm working on the top. You can just keep some places covered while you're working on other places. Perfectly okay. okay. That will cause the air to circulate more around this part that we just put on there. And if we dry that slowly to the same state that the bottom piece is, then there'll be less risk when we uncover it of having those pieces separate from each other. Okay. So we've got our head here. Okay. We can look. So we've got the bottom of our head here. It's got newspaper. Okay. So this will be supported by newspaper while we're working on it. That won't be the final um, part of the process though, because that newspaper is going to get burned away. So if we were to take out the newspaper, let that newspaper burn away, this skull would probably collapse a little bit on the neck here. So we will be attaching these later, but we still got work to do on the head. So we'll put that to the side for now. And um, I've got the rough shape of my head here. I want to give it a little more shape. He looks a little misshapen. He's got some head lumps. So I'm going to use my paddle here. <clears throat> Even that out just a little bit here. Okay. Everybody's kind of got a slightly lumpy head, but we don't need him to look too much like a lumpy nectarine. Okay. I'm gonna get across the face there. Try to get that more across, more or less level across the face there. Okay. Keep things kind of tapered. There's not a lot of really sharp angles on the human face, so we don't want to like square off the top of his head, square off his forehead. Unless you're doing something super stylized, mostly human beings are not super angular. Pretty organic looking. Okay. There we go. Okay. So we can use here. Okay. So you can see even with the bag on there, it's really starting to come together. We're seeing some real personality there. And I think I will leave this for now. Um, and the next video will be on how to start flushing out the face. All right. Thanks.